Hey, welcome to this radio video and uh, I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about uh, 10 meter amateur radio beacons. These are made to um, help in propagation basically. So uh, you go on the 10 meter band, you want to know is 10 meters open? Maybe you don't hear no one and you're thinking well maybe the band's dead. Well you can go to the beacons section and if you hear beacons it means 10 meter band is open. And the beacons all ID in Morse code their call signs. So you can search them in a list and by the way if you look in the description below the video I'll put the link to one of the lists that I like that is updated all the time. Basically it's the list of amateur radio beacons that you have on the 10 meter band. So you have to be in single sideband if you have a portable receiver just put yourself in single sideband to hear the tones of the Morse code signals if you have upper lower sideband you can you know doesn't matter much but you can try it upper sideband uh, of course if you have an IRN radio like I do I put it in CW mode since it's Morse code typically beacons start at just around about 28 100 and go up to 28 300 so basically you just tune slowly let's see let's put it slower and at some point you'll start hearing beacons they are usually Morse code signals so let's see what's the first one I'll hear this morning That's not it. Here's one. So you see here I'm around 28166.4 so I look at the list and I look at what's around 166. And we try to ID it. Sometimes they are weak. Well, let's see if I can ID this one. Usually with... So this sounds like, by the way, this is a great way to brush up on your Morse code because these beacons usually send their call signs in very slow speed. So this one is from what I just heard, XE2O probably, because on 166 there's only two, um, two beacons on the list. So you're sending V. try to ID it again and that's the fun of it also you know trying to ID especially when they're weak listening a few times to the call sign to make sure that you hear it so from what I hear this is XE2 something so it's in Mexico and what's nice about the list it gives you um, the type of antenna it gives you the power so for example It gives you the power of the uh, transmitter, which is here 5 watts. So pretty amazing when you think about it. Only 5 watts coming from Mexico. Let's try another one here. And, you know, listen every day because propagation changes. So what you hear one day is not necessarily what you'll hear the next day.
Some days you'll hear more than others. And it's fun, you know, you can make yourself a list of beacons you've heard. This one with an unusual two-tone Morse code. often send a tone. Now let's try for an ID on this one. This one sounds like, uh, just listen to it. The two tones here are making it harder to uh, actually ID the Morse code. So this is... That would be a zero. Checking the list here, 28270. Or around. Could be, I'll just try this one. Oh, this is kind of hard to ID. I think it's not on the list here, uh, from what I see. So. It happens that some of the um, beacons are not on the list. Let's try it again here. And I got to brush up on my Morse code. And the two tones are completely uh, making it hard for me to understand. It's by... Something like RIS, it's a uh, zero station, I believe. Let's try it again. If I can uh, ID it, but it's kind of hard. So, two tones. Oh, that would be. If I'm not mistaken, WB0RIO, and it's here on the list, and it would be in Boulder, Colorado, if I um, understand it right. WB0RIO. So that one's hard to ID with the two tones, basically. So not a lot today. Some days you'll hear a lot, some days you'll hear less. Uh, different times of days will give you different stations also. There's another one. It's harder when they're weak, but you know, you listen to those. So it ends at around uh, the, the, it goes up to 425 here, but I'd say that the uh, highest one's around 320, 
322. <clears throat> so tuning around 28, 100 to uh, let's say 28, 350, you'll have most beacons and you'll be able to listen to uh, these. Like I said, they're for propagation. So for example, if you hear tons of them from, say, uh, Colorado, well, you know that, you know, the path of 10 meters is open towards that area. Or if you hear tons of them from, I don't know, the south of U.S., Alabama, Florida, you know that propagation is open there. If you hear European ones, because there are European ones, you know that oh, path to Europe on 10 meters is open. So it's part of the fun of listening to, uh, you know, shortwave. There's a lot of things, and here are the beacons. And if you've been thinking, you know, of learning a little bit of Morse code, well, this is great. You can get yourself a little list of Morse code and uh, try to ID the little dots and dashes. As you see, I'm not that I'm not very good in Morse code, but you know, if I listen to a, a station two or three times ID, usually I'll get uh, enough of the call sign to know what it is. But uh, you know, the more you listen, the more you'll learn, and it's a fun little thing to uh, you know just DX these. Uh, low power um, beacons that are usually you know not much more some are like 25 30 watts but most of them are 5 10 15 watts so it tells you that how low a power you need to actually get a signal on 10 meters if you enjoy my videos why not subscribe to my channel you'll be informed when new videos are online if you have any comments questions anything you want to know let us know and if you have uh, a video of some sort that you'd like me to make about radio, let me know. I'll try to post one. Thanks for watching.